Alright, so this is game three. I'm on table one. Uh, obviously, there's a couple other people that are scoring just as good as me. Uh, but uh, so I think, I, yeah, I did get a major against Bill. But yeah, like I said, the, it was mainly the time limit. But uh, so I'm playing against this uh, pretty nice looking American Combat Patrol or British Combat Patrol Army. And uh, he's got that Jeep with the two machine guns in the front and two to the rear. Uh, he's got like a free artillery observer, uh, Sherman tank, a, that really nicely painted squad is a uh, squad of just regulars, and he's got another squad of regulars, and so that's his, most of his points are sunk into his tank. Uh, the mission that we're going to have to play is, uh, is uh, there's uh, the, uh, he rolled 2d3 tokens and placed them out there, uh, not 2d3. Uh, D3 plus one tokens. So we we've, we've already kind of done our deployment and whatnot. I'm feeling pretty good about this one just because of my mobility. Obviously, I don't want that tank popping my Lorraine carrier with uh, like an infantry squad and a uh, uh, lieutenant in there. But uh, yeah, right off the bat, uh, I kind of like lean most of my army to the left. And uh, I'm gonna rely on my tunes to cav to take the other one. Uh, I think there's just two tokens, yeah, just two tokens on the board. It might have been preset two. It might not have been a roll. But uh, uh, yeah, so just gotta have a good showing here. Uh, the bonus points you get those little cards to play. I do not have a good one to play. I, obviously, I can't knock his tank out with my tank. And uh, so I think I chose. Uh, what did I choose? Kill his boss or something? We'll see. This is here with Eric for game three. We're both doing really well so far. I played Eric yep. uh, last year at Nationals. He was yep. French, but he's brought some American for Combat Patrol. Well, technically they're British. But British, okay. They're British. So what I have here, that's just an objective piece right here. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight regular infantrymen with rifles. The okay. whole army are regulars. These guys uh, look outstanding. These are the nine guys. These are the Highlanders. They have their Claymore swords and everything like that. But they're regulars or they're they, commandos? They're just regulars. Okay. They're all regulars. Uh, this is the remains of the American tank coming along with them. Uh, Fury, they got it moving. Uh, I've got my observer British artillery spotter there. You've got your CO. And we've got our SAS Jeep, which is festooned with machine guns. Nice. Is that Recky? That is Recky. Okay. Very cool, very cool. Here's our board we're playing on. And we're doing this uh, secret intel, which was at Operation Sting this year. You have to get up to the guy. At the end of the turn, if you're touching him, you roll a dice to see if you find it for each unit, like within an inch or something, or touching it, or I'll have to read. And once you have it, you can't take it off the board, you can run around and hide with it. Right. Right. Starting turn three, artillery brush, see what it does. Hey! It's going to randomize. Better than it used to be. It used to be able to just pick a spot. It's going to randomize. It's going to be helpful if it randomizes far enough. Random direction with the arrow. Okay. Just trying to roll as close as we can to here. Move around as you see fit. Okay, it's probably going to deviate. Nine. Well, it's still theoretically if it blows up big enough. Yeah. yeah so I was right there on that fuzz. Can I borrow your tape measure? Yeah, no, rifle, rifle. All right. They're going to uh, sit on the fuzz, sit on the fuzz here. Okay. Okay, and then. Okay, the D6 plus 6. So. Do. Nope, nope, because I think I needed a I think you needed a two. Yeah, I think I needed Because you were an inch that. past me and you went nine yeah, inches that so. way. Yeah, that would have been a miss. Oh, yeah, that yeah. worked out. Could have been a great thing. Okay. Uh, I need to uh, roll to see if I find the secret plants. Yep. So, uh, test the Sengalis first. Um, nope. Lieutenant. Finds it, and can he and he can hand it off, right? Um, Once per game turn. I think when he 
when you give him an order, not when he finds it. I don't think it says anything. See so what we got here. At the end of the turn, if the infantry finds the mob, the unit must wait to... Okay, if not, in, uh, once the intel is being... It, it'll carry the marker as it moves. Always leave the marker. If that unit moves, if that unit moves as close as it is permitted to a friendly M3 movement, immediately transfer yes, the marker yeah. to any type of marker. When it moves. So, yeah. So, you give him an order, he can hand it off. Okay. Sounds good to me. Alright, so I just kind of figured I could take a snapshot of, I knew I could do that, I just forgot. So, slow it down just a minute, I'm going to break it down a little bit. Um, this is the left-hand side of the board. Uh, there's that uh, little cart from the Lorraine carrier. That was his one of his objective markers. And uh, you have to find it. So I had two things touching it. I had a 10-man, 11-man single lead squad and my lieutenant touching it. And I rolled for the squad first. They did not find it. You can find it on a 4-up. And uh, then I did find it with my lieutenant. He's not really the guy I want to have it, uh, unfortunately. But better to have it than to not have it. You can see his Sherman tank is in the woods there right across from my Lorraine carrier. He fortunately had come in turn two and missed. Uh, he's got a uh, he's got uh, his uh, jeep back there. My my tank. I bring it in on top of this hill to the far left just to kind of provide some machine gun support. Uh, but he's just been pretty much picking at the 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 singleese, which I've lined them up so single like along that thing. So I had two out there to touch it. Uh, and then also block the kind of the alley, and then uh, and then I've got the rest of them behind hard cover from about any of his fire sources. So I'm relying on them to hold them up while I run back with it. So that's what we got going on the left, and on the the right hand side uh, is he's pretty much just got this eight man squat to try to get that one. I like the position when I chose the board edge because uh, he's going to have to come over that wall, so he wouldn't be able to run two turns to get to it he'd have to at least do an advance over it or run on the outside of the wall which would still take three turns i've got two units of calf they fail to come in turn two both of them veteran needing tens so that kind of sucked uh turn three uh which we're going to get to i believe only one comes in but it's enough to start pressuring these guys uh i think the first time eric rolled to find it too he did uh, come across with like one guy, which that's all you need. The rest behind the hard cover, which is smart. Uh, I think he failed to find it, which gave me a huge. But uh, or I touched it first, and I failed to find it. Yeah, we'll get to that. But it gets pretty. Uh, it's pretty intense on the right hand side. Actually, I guess I don't have any more video. Uh, which is unfortunate. I did a really bad job of battle reporting day one. Uh, when I found out there was no power source, I was just trying to wing it. I didn't really have it in my mind. I didn't take pictures for crap, which is unfortunate. But I do get better during the team ones. I, In my mind, I think I do. Uh, probably helped that I had a teammate to be doing stuff. And I could just kind of do a little bit of my own thing. But okay, so over on the right-hand side, I get there with the cavalry squad. They find it first try. He charges them, which is... Risky a little bit. We're going Simo uh, because he's going over the wall. Uh, he does great, and his uh, eight-man squad beats. I think he shot me the turn before, and I beat like five cavalry guys. Uh, so he was very pleased with that. He consolidated. Uh, uh, an inch or something. Oh no, I hadn't found it. I had not found it. So that was critical. It's pretty critical because I didn't find it. So I didn't have it. If I had owned it, he would immediately gain control of it. And he could have consolidated on the other side of the wall. Uh, so he had to stay in touch with it. And he did not find it. So then I charged him with my other cavalry unit. And uh, was able to kill him. And I only had two guys left though. I mean, he, he tore up my cavalry with that regular squad. Uh, but I survived. I had two men left. And uh, I was able to find that token... On the next roll and I didn't have an activation dice on me so I knew I could recce and I could recce far enough to go all the way around to the back side of that building so I knew I had that one I couldn't fail a recce check if you shot at me and so I knew that one was good uh, now then we have over on the left hand side of the board got this going on and uh, you see my FT 17 it ends up uh, uh, advancing pass order check advance gets up to the top of the hill and then he just kind of 
comes down the other side of the hill after a turn to try to block up the lane. Lorraine Carey kind of turns sideways to block. So I run with my lieutenant around the back of the Lorraine Carrier. Uh, my Sengalis then start failing. I uh, should have activated them first, but I was worried the lieutenant would get popped. I didn't want to. I, actually, what I should have done was a snap two. I totally forgot about that. Could have snap twoed and done them both at the same time, but I totally forgot. Uh, but the Singalese end up just going down by failing order checks, probably for the rest of the game. Uh, he, he's, he's plucking away at him because he doesn't want to get too close. He's got a regular squad that had failed to come in probably until turn four. And then they start hoofing it down that alleyway. The Sherman is basically uh, at will to do whatever it wants. Uh, I don't even remember where my howitzer is, but it doesn't really pe play a part. Um, the Sherman just kind of starts driving down the alley, drives over the wall to the right of my Lorraine Care. He's, he's just trying to hit my lieutenant on sevens, but my lieutenant is an inexperienced guy. So if he scores a hit, I'm pretty much dead. That three-man squad of inexperienced used to be five. They end up rallying, coming down, and getting the token from the lieutenant, but then they die, and... If I remember correctly, I that one ends up laying on the ground at the end of the game. Uh, but to score, there's no major minor. There's just a win, loss, draw, but then there's the bonus points. So I score a win because I have more tokens than the enemy. He has zero. Uh, and uh, I have the one that the cavalry, two-man cavalry, ended up going around the back of the house and holding on to. Uh, his bonus points objectives i do not remember what it was but i believe it was kill my lieutenant which he ended up doing and mine may have been keep my lieutenant alive so i did not score or no it was kill his lieutenant and i never even i went and never even close to doing that uh his lieutenant kind of came up behind that house it was kind of he was just pot shotting my single to put additional pins on there but uh I never really had, I think I took one machine gun shot from my FT at it on the move, uh, hard cover, you know, looking for a seven, but, uh, so yeah, got the win and can't complain as a hard fought match. Uh, I, I, it was not going, I guess turn two and three were the definers of this one. Eric had a good plan. Uh, he knew his tank was going to just run rough shot. Uh, unfortunately for him, he failed on that regular infantry check uh, twice, and they didn't come in, and that really hurt him in his game plan quite a bit. Uh, I was able to just get the token far enough away before my guys died that he wouldn't be able to pick it up. Uh, so yeah, it was a good match, good opponent. Uh, it's twice I've played him, and both times were very good. He's very, very skilled. So looking forward to maybe seeing him in the future at Adepticon. That'd be great. So when they announced the winners, uh, overall winner was Tim. Uh, Tim was part of, you know, Wahoo Warrior group. Uh, so I was very proud of him. I never faced him, fortunately. <laughs> uh, but uh, he got best overall. I think he had three. W he definitely he had three wins. And I think in each one he obtained his maximum five points. So bravo, sir. Uh, I ended up getting best ally general. They didn't have. I thought they were going to have minor power, major, and uh, minor power allied and axis, but they only had the stuff for uh, allied axis. So I got best allied, and I got a sweet ass ribbon. It's the first time I've placed at a. Uh, well, I've only been to Adepticon once for bolt action, and I didn't do any of the side events. And before that, I was Warhammer Fantasy, and I would play orcs and goblins. So it wasn't super competitive, but uh, I, I got. The prizes they announced the the other ones first, so I ended up getting a like a half track with a mortar in it. And here's our crew, the Wahoo Warrior crew, and there's also Josh and Blake. They're part of us with the Bolt Action Nebraska group. Uh, Josh was, you know, you know, you know Josh. But uh, so we ended up getting uh, three medals. Uh, Bill got best sportsman. So I was, I mean, these and Tim's never been to Adepticon, so our crew came out and picked up three of the four possible medals for combat patrol and so I was super stoked about the bolt action nebraska crew and uh the wahoo warrior channel i was very proud of these guys best sportsman is probably one of the highest esteemed awards and he's a great guy uh 
I gave him a three, so I don't know how he pulled it out. Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, I rate, I don't rate opponents, or I don't rate uh, very high on the sportsmanship. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I, I don't put, I don't give everybody tens. You know, I just don't do that. Uh, I think I gave one ten all week, and I was against uh, in nationals against a Panzer one uh, horde player. <laughs> Uh, he was just a swell guy. I give nines and eights and such, but uh, anyway, getting off track. Uh, very proud of the crew, very proud of the guys. So next day is going to be teams. Ryan Carlson is going to be my partner. Bill and Tim are partners, and Josh and Blake. Josh is running, uh, well, Blake is running Italians, and Josh is running, oh, what are you running, Josh? Marines, that's right. They had a sweet ass display board too. Uh, looked really cool. Uh, and uh, or no, uh, Blake's running Australians for that. Australians and U.S. Marines. It's a really cool thing. Cool, cool, cool army. Uh, they have a lot of infantry. A lot of infantry. But anyway, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll uh, we'll start getting some team battles up. Should have better quality.